How's it going, folks? And welcome back to episode number 46 of Park 2 Primera. How are we on episode 46 already? This series has kind of flown by. I feel like 46 episodes, by my own personal standards, it's not a mammoth series. Within the context of YouTube, it's a pretty long time. So thank you to those of you who are continuing to watch on the daily. I appreciate it massively. And well, to mark the occasion that is... Episode 46, it's not really a landmark. Uh, we've got a double header. Uh, we've got a game in the league and a game in the Champions League. We are going to be taken on by Leverkusen and Valencia. Um, two games which we would really like to win in. Now, since you were last here, we have mixed things up. It's not been the best run of form. I mean, I say that. We're currently sat second in the league, but we've not been particularly great, as you're going to come to see. And uh, after reflection and thinking about how to get more out of Calderon... I've changed my tack, and I think we might try going back to a variant of last year's 4-2-3-1. I feel like the experiment that was this 4-3-3, it's over for now. There were a few comments about it, and I kind of agree with them. I feel like with this system, you rely a lot on the right winger. It's a lot of pressure for a youngster like Martinez to shoulder. If he's not playing well, we really don't tick over. Elsewhere, I wasn't overly happy with how the midfield was functioning within the central midfielders. I felt like Pablo really wasn't having a great deal of the ball as a Mazala or even as an advanced playmaker as we kind of alternated that role. So in an attempt to take things back, but also to get Calderon more involved than ever, we're going to the 4-2-3-1 that we played for the previous few years, but with a slight change in role, where Pablo Torre is now going to play as a shadow striker and Calderon is going to play as an advanced playmaker on the wing. Um, the reason for doing this is really, I don't think he's quick enough to be a winger. He's not got the crossing to put balls into the box and he doesn't really have the finishing or long shots to be an inside forward. And when you look at him, he's a pretty bloody good playmaker. In fact, I know I bigged him up yesterday. In yesterday, I feel like we have to continue bigging him up. Compare him to Pablo Torre, there is not a world of difference. I think you can make an argument that Calderon is better at 18. I want to keep playing him. Of course, Torre is currently, at least, going to be leaving us at the end of his loan at the end of this year. Maybe we then go back to a slightly more familiar 4 2 3 one with Calderon at centre attack in mid, but I want to try and get more out of Pablo. If the next six months is going to be his last six months here, I want them to be six months to remember. So far, they've really not been, and to be fair, this tactic kind of tweak isn't just about changing the midfield for the sake of the individuals. The performances just haven't been good enough. So let's talk about those performances since you were last year. Of course, last time out, we lost against Liverpool. And well, we ended the month of October with two wins in the league. Uh, when Labrada and Valladolid uh, getting beaten uh, on both occasions, we kept clean sheets, which was nice to see. And uh, well, Mahika kept his goal scoring run going. He has been very, very important to us. Genuinely, when you look at kind of the goal scoring, uh, I don't know what we would do without Mahika. But as you can see here, even over October, if we include kind of the run in prior to the kind of start of yesterday's episode, there's just been a distinct lack of goals. And whilst the clean sheets that opened up the month of November are great to see, we had to change something going forward. You can see it against Bilbao, it finished nil-nil. And against Liverpool in the Champions League at home, again, nil-nil. Ball draw, not a lot happened. Uh, Balde, we managed to injure. Um, I say that like that's the only thing we achieved there. I was bitter about him after yesterday's episode. Nil-nil is okay, but it doesn't really solve things for us. You can see here, we still sit bottom of the group, which makes today's game against Bayer Leverkusen all the more important. If we fail to win here, well, we're not, we're not going to be in the knockout stages of the Champions League, pretty much. I don't think it would be mathematically guaranteed, uh, but it'd be... Close to impossible. So today is a big day. Now, following on from that Liverpool game, we took on Getafe where it finished 1-1 and that was the straw that broke the camel's back. That was when I decided I'd had enough. So for the Real Betis game, we went to the 4-2-3-1 and I'll tell you what, Mahika got a hat-trick, Calderon got a 7.6. So I think it worked. But in this game against Betis, it was not all plain sailing. Obviously, a change in system is always a little bit risky. So when they scored from range after 32 minutes, my heart sank a little bit. The good news is, though, we fought back, albeit via a gift. Yeah, uh, fortunate that Mahika got a second bite of the cherry as it bounced off the post. Uh, the good news is, as we moved on, uh, into kind of, well, the, the latter stages of the game, we really grew into it. We looked like we knew what we were doing. Colder on with the ball through to their for Mejica was absolutely sensational. And in the second half, we earned a penalty. Mejica scored it expertly in off the post. Doesn't get much more precise than that. And with that, we got a win. 
that returns us towards the top of the La Liga table, where we now sit in second. And well, if we look at the league table, you can see here a gap is emerging between Atleti in fourth and Valencia in fifth. We look like we're one of the best of the rest. Um, I would like to finish inside the top four. I would like to finish as high as we can in the top four, of course. But already, it looks like a tall order to catch a Real Madrid team who lost one game last year, which was against us, and are yet to lose this year. Um, the only silver lining really here is that we are, you know, doing better than Barcelona and Atleti for now. Only 14 games into the season. There's still quite a lot left to go here, isn't there? But alas, that brings us to the first of today's games, which is against Bayer Leverkusen. As I already alluded to, we have to win this one. So the change in system, it's a bold move to go with, but it's a move we're going to go with. Awusu is still coming back from injury, so Kapanu is going to play defensive midfielder. The rest of the team kind of looks as you would expect. Um, you may have caught a slight change to when we last played this shape in terms of the wingbacks. Um, previously, Mark was playing on wingback on attack and Zivkovic, or Marsa as it was last season, played left back on support. Uh, with Calderon coming into the team, with him playing as a wide advanced playmaker, Zivkovic is going to need to make those overlapping runs. And well, with his overall physical capability, his immense stamina, good work rate, and very, very kind of good acceleration and pace, I think he is the kind of wingback who we can rely on to do this kind of job. I have had to manage his fitness just a little bit, rotating him around. You might remember over the last few episodes, he's asked for a rest and has been in need of a rest. He's had that. He's back. He's rejuvenated. Um, I think he and Calderon are going to hopefully strike up a partnership out on the left-hand side today. There's a small part of me that wants to lie to the players here and tell them it's not a big game. You don't need to worry. We absolutely do need to worry. We need to play better today than we have done as of late. We've been pretty disappointing in the Champions League. We lost against Lazio. We lost against Liverpool. We only drew against Liverpool at home we really, really, really could do with three points here. Even a draw leaves us with a pretty big mountain to climb with Lazio to end the group stages. So hopefully today, change of system, away from home, we're going to cause an upset and, well, exciting times, everyone, because there's going to be a kickoff highlight. Zivkovic wins the ball well. Uh, lots of pressure on Calderon. I feel like this year I'm just hoping that he's going to be the standout man for us. On paper, he looks sensational. He's had moments of brilliance and we'll hope for more moments of brilliance from him today as we give away the ball and Okafor, the Swiss forward, is through. I'll tell you what, Ramadani, fantastic stop. I feel like in live comms, we've not seen enough of Ramadani saves. They are the kind of saves right there that keep you in matches. And albeit a minute in, that could be a huge turning point in this game. Throwing on the far side, it's Zivkovic trying to pick out Calderon, who is absolutely tiny. Not the man to aim for in the air like that. Kapanu back to Calderon. He switches the play to Martinez. One youth prospect to another. Back to Calderon. Back post header. Goes just over the crossbar. Five minutes gone, though. We're creating something. And uh, well, perhaps most excitedly, Calderon is getting involved. Zivkovic, Calderon, Blanco. He has a long shot in his locker. Does he have the keys to his locker? He gives it to Mark, who gives it to Pablo, playing as the shadow striker. He hits the post. And the ball is cleared away from danger. Oh, my word. There is just chance after chance after chance right now early on. As now Hamed to Bodu for them, their key man, of course. Karna, headed away by Velez. I feel like Velez had a fantastic season last year. Of course, this year he's got a new centre-back partner, Generally speaking, defensively, we've been superb. I've been really happy with the defence, which is a bit weird because that was the area of the pitch I was perhaps most worried about. Um, you may have caught that Avramides isn't starting today. Um, I want to try playing him as a striker, but it's very difficult to justify dropping Mejica at the moment. I feel like with Avramides, we've played him as the supporting striker. We've played him out on the wing. He's not really performed in any of those areas. There comes a point where we have to try and play him, I think, as a striker. It's a case of... I need a day where Mejica isn't really shining to, well, throw him on and hope that he can make a difference for us. And this is not the day to do that. I'm going to go with the tried and trusted. As Blanco plays it over to Martinez, who's going to have the quickness to keep that in. Gives it to Pablo, gives it to Mark. Lovely build-up play. Mejica, effort blocked. Still in dangerous territory, though, for them. Unfortunately, we are not going to be able to muster up a second opportunity. 25 minutes gone, still nil-nil. Not sure how that's still the case. Now, as we reach half time, you may have noticed that my face cam vanished during the first half. My camera froze. I don't know when my camera froze, but 
a bit of a throw. For those of you who hate seeing my live reactions, you had a half without it. Embrace it. I mean, hopefully it doesn't freeze again. I'm more concerned about the player's performance on the pitch than the camera freezing or not, if I'm being completely honest. We have to step things up in this second half. We need a better performance. Martinez, can you spark this team into life, my friend? Running down the wing, whips it goalwards. That is not convincing goalkeeping. One little bit. Colder on into Pablo. And you know what? We will take that. We have Pablo kind of, I want to say, the master and Calderon, the apprentice. The weird thing there being, of course, Pablo is like 22 years old. But out with the old, in with the new, perhaps, I thought when the goalkeeper fluffed his lines there, there might be a chance. As it went wide, wasn't entirely convinced it was going to amount to anything. But a ball of quality into the box, a lovely volley by Pablo, and we take the lead in this game, and deservedly so, I might say so myself on the balance of play. 20 minutes left in this game. Nothing has happened since we've scored. I don't know if that is good or bad. It could be bad if they score here. We need to win this game. A draw really is not enough. So I don't want to sit back and defend. But Kapanu on a knock concerns me. We'll bring in Awusu to maybe build up some fitness. Martinez is not at the best of games. So let's bring in Hardy. And you know what? Alessio. Mahika's not performed today. This is your time to shine. Playing you as a striker... Show me, show me that I need to give you more chances. It's weird, right? Mahika's not that good on paper, but he always performs well. He always gets goals. It makes it almost impossible to drop him. This is a rare chance for Avramides, and since he's come on, absolutely nothing's happened, and this game is just going to fizzle out. So the Avramides effect, ladies and gentlemen. Nothing happens. No chances for or against. They actually had a late flurry of chances. We didn't see them. And will Calderon's assist to Pablo Torre's goal is the difference maker there. A 1-0 win, a game that we desperately needed to win. As you can see here, doesn't make the picture any clearer in terms of what's going to happen next. What it does mean is that when we take on Lazio in the next game, the final game of the group stages, we're going to need to win that one. A draw may not be enough, I don't think, for Europa League football even, depending on the result of the other game. When is that match? When do I need to be preparing for? That's that's what I want to know right now. That game is in about a month's time. But, uh, well, before then, we've got to take on Valencia. It's the second game of today's episode. It's away. Team in fifth. If we lose here, they can close the ground on us just a little bit. A win here. And we will be looking to further extend the gap between the Elite Four which I'm trying to shoehorn us into, uh, and the rest of the league. I feel like we're slowly getting there. A win in this next game really could prove that. It is, however, going to be a little bit tricky. Okay, game number two is a big one. We want to beat Valencia today. Worth noting, Real Madrid and Atletico Madrid, they're playing one another. This might be an opportunity to close the gap on Real a little bit, if Atleti can do us a favour. Before we get into today's game, um, I want to talk about the defence, and I want to talk about the centre-backs, namely, um, because I think, obviously, as a duo, Galaretta and Velez have been very interesting. Of course, Velez joined us about two years ago now. It will be two years ago once we get to the January transfer window. Um, obviously, last year, he won La Liga's Young Player of the Season as a centre-back, which is kind of mad. And last year, I wondered how much of an impact his goals had had. But actually, this year, he's not had goals, and he's got a not dissimilar average rating of a 7.2. He's not improved a whole lot since he's come to us. It's a bit of a weird one where he's got great physicals, great mentals. I thought, oh, the technicals, they'll come along. Um, realistically, over the last two years, he's not developed massively. There was a little bit of interest in him, you might remember, from Barcelona. He is going to be a player, however, who gets homegrown at club, which is obviously really big. Uh, when you're in the Champions League, you need to have four players who trained at the club for three years before their 21st birthday. Velez will be a big tick on that quota um, going forward. As a result, it makes him a little bit difficult to sell. Additionally, the fans have become really quite attached to him. Now, of course, last year he played alongside Onana. This year, he's been playing alongside Galaretta, who has improved a hell of a lot. And as you can see here, has recently made his debut for the Argentina national team, which is superb. I wish he was a little bit better with the ball at his feet. His vision and passing on incredible. The fact he's got better flair than passing is kind of concerning, I feel like, as a modern centre-back at least. But on the whole, he's looked really good for us so far, Esteban here. Um, I don't know if we're really going to get much of a read on how much he's improved, but 
I've noticed a steady trail of improvements. Um, unlike Velez, he's tipped to have perhaps slightly more potential. He's also a consistent performer, which is nice. I do feel like with these two centre-backs, we've got a long-term option. And of course, Ramadani has been slotted in between them this year. There's been a hell of a lot of change um, this season when it comes to the defence, not just with these guys either. Of course, Zivkovic has also come in at left-back and has also looked to develop a ton. I think one thing that we should really highlight is the age of this defence. This is a defence that could play for us for the next 10 years. I feel like at this moment... Mark's a bit of an odd one out, really, um, purely on the basis that he's not a regen. Of course, we're six years into the save game now, so kind of half or maybe slightly less than half uh, of the real players have now gone on to retire. Players like Mark look good. Could I do better than Mark? I don't know if I could, really. I'd love to sign him permanently, but I don't think United... I mean, should we try? We've had him on loan for the last few years. I still don't have 148 million Manchester United will we'll try and loan him for another year but no the defense on the whole has been really really good I think that is a kind of you know shown by the fact that as you can see here Ramadani has eight clean sheets which is the joint most in the league and whilst I've kind of discussed today the goal scoring issues you know we really haven't had that many games where we've scored multiple goals over the last two months um, one thing that has been a consistent kind of factor of these performances is we don't tend to concede too many. In fact, we kept clean sheets in, I think, more than half the games over the last two months. Of course, we're going to look to do something like that again today against Valencia. So in terms of the team for today's game, I think we're going to go with the same team that played the last game, with one little exception. Avramides, you should be better than Mahika. We're having issues with goal scoring, but the issue is... Mahik is the one man actually getting the goals for us, which makes it difficult to drop the one guy who seems to be able to score. I mean, when you compare these two on paper, Avramides should be better, shouldn't he, really? And the bizarre thing is, if we just ignore players in the actual first team, there are plenty of other players who perhaps should be better than Mahika. The man I'm thinking of, where is he? Resende. I'm not sure why he's in the under-19s, but we won't question it. Resende... Is he better than Mahika? I mean, on paper, you'd certainly say there's, there's not a world of difference. Of course, Resende, we picked up on a freebie a few years ago. He's been on his own little adventure with Numancia. They were down in the third tier of Spain a couple of years ago. They got promoted back-to-back -back years with this man, Resende, being their top goal scorer both years. He has carried a team to promotion. Unfortunately, the fairy tale isn't quite going to plan this year, as after back-to-back -back promotions, they are sat currently in the relegation zone. We'll hope that they can improve. It's also worth noting, you may have noticed, oh, I don't think anyone has noticed, but if, if you were eagle-eyed, you might have done. LaRue, who we signed during the kind of transfer special early, earlier on this summer, I ended up loaning him out also to Numancia uh, in a real bid to hopefully get them, pro well, to stay up. They can't, they can't get promoted from La Liga. But no, I want to see them to stay up. And so we've given Resende a friend. Now, LaRue has played lots of football. Good to see him develop. I don't know if he'll ever play for us in the first team, but we picked him up on a freebie. He's playing for a, you know, a team in our division. We'll keep an eye on him and Resende, but the more I see Resende, the more I feel like every year I need to bring him back. I need to get him in the first team. The issue is, I've been saying that for the last two years, um, but I feel there's going to come a time soon. I don't want to see Numantia get relegated. I would feel responsible for taking back Resende and watching them go down. But anyway, we've gone on a massive tangent there. The long and short of it is Resende uh, is not playing for us. Avramides is playing for us. He is going to be our man up top. The rest of the team is going to remain unchanged, I think. I'm looking at Kapanu struggling, and I'm actually thinking, let's change things up. I'm going to bring Vega into the team. I've seen a few people in the comments kind of questioning his star ability. I'm going to say it louder for the people in the back. Stars aren't accurate in Football Manager. Stars are a load of rubbish in Football Manager. Um, they are impacted by your staff's attributes. They're impacted by a player's reputation. Basically, for a player like Vega, who's a great player who hasn't played a great deal, he's just going to be rated quite lowly. I mean, here he is compared to Pablo Torre, and this polygon isn't the best comparison, but even if we just look at this kind of head-to-head -head comparison here, there is no way in hell Vega is a whole star and a half worse than Pablo Torre. Additionally, He's consistent and he loves big matches. Gabri, I'm bigging you up. I'm playing you today. Please don't let me down or you're going to make me look like a mug. <sighs> Did anyone see me misclick there?
I've accidentally stormed out the tunnel press conference. I hope that doesn't come back to bite me. That isn't an awkward... I was meant to send the assistant. I mean, looking at that league table, things look pretty rosy for us at the moment. 31 points from 14 is no mean feat. This is the kind of game that is going to further extend our gap over the teams chasing down those Champions League spots, those positions, the ones that I want to be in. I want to get top four this year. At the moment, of course, we do sit ahead of the likes of Atleti and Barcelona, I feel like, to manage that for the entire season for another year would be a pretty crazy achievement. I think if it is going to happen, we've got to show a little bit more going forward. And well, we could be tested today. I've just noticed Martinez has got a knock. That's not something I want to see. And neither is them having possession in our half. As well, Gaia has it in the wide area. He's going to look to get it in. Martinez puts in one tackle. Doesn't want to put in another, but Zivkovic heads it away. Torre can't get there. And well, they could look to pierce a hole through our heart. And it's Harry Wilson of all men on the far hand side of the pitch, on his left peg, he tucks it away, he does a roly-poly on the spot, just to rub it in my face a little bit more, and Valencia take a lead in this game. It would be kind of typical, wouldn't it, if after criticising our attack all episode, and bigging up how good def defensively we've been, we go on to lose this game quite convincingly, uh, and maybe score a few as well. Basically, I need to get the attack and the defence performing at once. But let's see if we can have a response. Gabri, Gabri, I've bigged you up. Don't let me down. I'm calling you by your first name, Calderon. What are you doing? I don't know what that was. It's cleared away, though. Blanco lumps it forward. Emilio heads it away to Harry Wilson. Velez reads that well. Martinez on with that knock. I'm wondering if I should take him off the pitch. It would probably mean bringing in Hardy, which feels like it's a name I've not heard in a long time. Jamie Hardy, or Hamie Hardy. I can't remember how I meant to say it. It's been that long since I've see, said it. He is still here, everyone, as is Avramides on his lonesome. I mean, I know he's desperate to make an effort and make an impact. That was atrocious, though. Martinez is on the floor getting treatment. It does not look good, does it? It might be a case of taking him off. Guides bringing the ball down the near side, whips it in into the six-yard box. This is dangerous. And while Mascaros scores a second for them. That's problematic. I think problematic is probably an understatement. We are in danger. And whilst we are down a man here, I'm not sure really how much we can claim it contributed towards that goal. Um, questionable defending at best there. A few players chasing the same ball. In the end, it fell the way of Valencia. They've scored. And I'm not happy, Bunny. I mean, we're still second the way things are stood just because Barcelona aren't winning, and neither are Atleti. The other two teams in and around us drawing nil-nil. Maybe one highlight here to end the first half. Could we get a late goal to maybe, I don't know, but boost spirits at this point? I feel like our players look miserable on the pitch. Martinez, what can you do? He's got a knock. The physio's given him a rub, and now he's just giving the ball away. It might be time for Hardy to go and get warmed up, I think. Ball dealt with only as far as Galaretta, who switches it to Velez. Let's look to build from the back. Vega. Going to have Calderon in support as well as Zivkovic. Speaking of the man, there he is. Back to Calderon. He plays it forward. Aframides looked offside there. He was offside there. Um, is it bad that I want to bring on Mahika at half time? Now, you know what? You know what? I'm, I'm going to... I've told the players I'm pleased. I've misclicked too much today. I've stormed out of a press conference I didn't mean to. I've now told the players I'm happy. They all hate me. Can I try and turn it around? I mean, at least half the players look happy now, but oh dear, Jack. Right, you know what? Mahika, he's not heard me shout the wrong thing. Let's bring him on and let's bring in Hardy. I feel like Hardy just kind of exists. He's kind of the ultimate squad player. Last year, he played a lot for us. This year, I've given him a few opportunities, including four starts. He has played football. He's not very, played very well in them, but he's going to get a chance here to show us what he's made of. Um, what's happened here? Martinez has just been subbed off. I guess Martinez has had enough of his injury and succumbed to it at the same time that we've made some subs. Right, Mahika's on the pitch. Wilson's on a corner for them. This is not good if they score here. <laughs> oh, my word, they've hit the crossbar. This is not what I want to see. This is not what I planned. Musa heads over. Can I level with you? There's a small there is a small part of me that wants to go back to the 4-3-3. Three, three. The defensive or well not defensive, the the tactical kind of what's the word? Self-doubt is what I'm gonna go with. The tactical self-doubt I've got today is atrocious. 
coming from all the misclicking. Right, we're going to change the system up. Meanwhile, Real Madrid have taken the lead against Atleti. Atleti, you had one job. You're letting us down. Hardy, on off the bench. Maybe you should go back down and sit on the bench. Why have you shot from there, you wazzock? I don't want to admit it. We are yet to have a shot on target in this game. That is a tiny bit concerning, isn't it? Right, okay, look. There's not long left in this game. We've made a change in personnel, a change in formation. Vega's not played well, but to be fair, Torre's not played well either. Let's bring in Atakovic as Mr. Mazala. I don't know if that's a wise decision or not, but at this moment in time, we've got to go for it a little bit more. Zivkovic, get on the attack. Mark, you know what, Mark? You can go forward as well. We're going to look to be more direct. Less of the work in the ball into the box. Get it forward quickly. 15 minutes for two goals. I mean, at least we've had a Sean target now, right? I mean, there's a matter of minutes left here. And I just, I don't believe in us. I don't believe in us. And they could add further misery. Two shots are blocked there. We're into another highlight, but with 60 seconds left, this, if it is going to be a goal, is surely only going to be a consolation. What a disappointing performance today. I felt like against Bayer Leverkusen, whilst we weren't great, we looked good at the back. This game here conceded a couple of early on. We needed to try and to grow into the game a little bit. And whilst, yes, we are away from home, and yes, I do feel like the home and away advantage is a massive factor this year in Football Manager. I mean, you have to say it here. Like We've not looked good enough. We've looked like a team who just aren't interested, who haven't really turned up. And with 10 seconds left, irrespective of if we score here... It's going to be another frustrating day at the office where we don't really create enough. But on this occasion, we don't defend particularly well either. And that, to be honest, just stings a little bit. As it is going to finish 2-0 here. What I would say is we did create a few chances later on in the game. Zivkovic got our best performer, but he was not great. Maybe the decision to drop Mejica is questionable at best. I mean, like we said, Avramides is better on paper, but Mejica just seems to perform. Was given 45 minutes there, didn't really perform. As a result of that result, Valencia do close the gap on us to five. We have got a massively better goal difference, though, which is certainly worth considering. Um, what I would say is it does leave me a little bit frustrated, a little bit unsure of what to do. I feel like defensively we're fine. At the moment, we're in a bit of a rut where... I don't know how to feel about either system that we have. On the one hand, I like this shape. It worked for us over the previous few years, and maybe it's a case of being patient with a young squad. Maybe I'm expecting a bit too much in terms of quality of performances. Like, I mean, if we just look at the season preview, Valencia were predicted to finish way, way above us. They're up there in fourth. We're down in eighth. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a weird one, right? Because we're doing well in the league. We're doing fine. We're not doing particularly great in the Champions League. But ultimately, I look at the performances, I look at the underlying issues here, and if it wasn't for our outstanding defence, we would really, really be struggling right now. And as a result of that, I want to remain hypercritical. But anyway, guys, that is going to wrap up today's episode from me. Next time out, I think we're going to do the Lazio game, and we might pair it up with the Super Copa game against Athletic Bilbao. Um, we'll figure things out. I think it's going to be a two-part special. Maybe we'll do Lazio and then maybe we'll do Granada at the start of the transfer window. We've also got the Super Copper as well, though. I've got all these games awkwardly positioned around to try and commentate over. Ultimately, this Lazio game tomorrow is going to be big. It's going to be a game that really decides our European fate in terms of for the second half of the season. Is it going to be Champions League? Is it going to be Europa League? Are we going to be packing our bags and focusing exclusively on the league? I really hope that latter option is not going to be the case. But anyway, until next time, thank you for watching as always. Do drop a like on the video if you've enjoyed it. If you've got any comments with regards to the team, the system, the players, words of wisdom, any of that, leave it down below. I think maybe I've just become accustomed to us overperforming and doing really well. And this year we're just kind of having the kind of year we should have had more of. I mean, I'm having a meltdown. We've lost two league games all year. Look, I need to calm down. Jack, calm down. I'm coming back tomorrow renewed. We're going to beat Lazio. Maybe. I'll see you all then. <laughs> Take care. <laughs>